The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Kayode Ariwola, has lamented the rise in political cases and observed that it is practically affecting all the courts in the country. Speaking during Wednesday's swearing-in of nine newly appointed justices of the Court of Appeal, Justice Ariwola said the development is a reflection of the challenging times Nigeria is passing through. He called on his colleagues to rise up to the occasion in order not to disappoint the people. Arise News Analyst Dayo Shobowale is here to review the CJN's expressed concerns as well as recommend how the judiciary's involvement in partisan politics can be reduced to the barest minimum. It's good to have you again on the show, Mr. Shobowale. Pleasure, yeah, as usual. It's a pleasure of being here, as usual. Good afternoon. Now, yeah. I mean, we're seeing the CJN lamenting about this rise in, uh, steady rise in political cases. But what he advocated was a reduction in litigation and a greater emphasis on alternative dispute resolution methods. Um, can we explore that a bit? So, uh, what, what would you say would be the best way to uh, steady this rise in political cases? Is as suggested by the CJN. There is no way, because he even said Nigerians are a litigious lot, mm -hmm. and they always go to court. He also mentioned that he said they should seek alternative means. But I don't see how you can minimize the participation of the judiciary in the political system, because it is the duty of the judiciary, which he has, to interpret the law. I you know Nigerians, there is no perfect judgment. Once you lose, you take up ammunition and you go after the judge, literally. But what he's saying is what I'll concentrate on. And then I will illustrate with one or two examples. What he is saying is that these judges, let me, have come to the court of appeal and that they are the signature of all eyes. That people will offer them gifts mm -hmm. and things and wealth. But then, at the end of the day, see, they should be able to stand alone in honesty rather than join the mob and lose their reputation and integrity. That, is, that sounds more like uh, in my church when they are swearing in priests. <laughs> and they say, those you forgive, God will forgive. Those you do not forgive, God. So it's, ad more, it's an admonition, not a lamentation, that live up to the integrity of the work you have taken off. And that if you do that, you may be alone, you get me? But you get to the, from the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court, God willing. That is as it is. But then let us illustrate with concrete example. You know the last judgment now, presidential uh, election petition. Election petition. Uh, you know the mood of people there. Uh, there are some people looking for gun to shoot the judges, and there are some people who are very happy. With the judge, I'm happy with the judgment. You get me? Oh, I say it on a basket. If I listen to it, for the first time in Nigeria, they, they, you know, we, I mean, me, I listen to a court judgment almost throughout. No, I'm, no, I'm not familiar with uh, judgments. And if I listen with a, a friend of mine who's a lawyer, was interpreting some things for me. And you could see these judges, they are court, you know, uh, judges of the Court of Appeal, like this one, this one, they went to great length. Different characters with different moods, with their uh, disposition and all that. I, uh, I learned a lot from it. Forget that I said I liked it. It's not my liking it, it's not, it's not political. It's in terms of how they deliver justice. You see, they say justice should be blind. Of course, those who did not like the judgment, you know, you know the normal thing, and that was what the CJ was referring to, that gifts and uh, wealth will be offered you, but to refrain from taking them and keep to your conscience. That when you stand alone, you will not be that rich, but at the end of the day, you'll, you, you'll, be, you, you'll be, you know, happy with your conscience and you sleep well. So that is the essence of it. And you know, justice, justice, justice is said to be blind. It, justice like a lady, like you, blindfolded, who wills a sword, which means you dispense justice without favor. That's what the CJ is telling his people. And I believe him, and I believe him. 
And I urge those judges to listen to his words. We definitely but then, hear wait, okay. Political cases, mm. I will illustrate, to sound funny. I'm a Yoruba person. We have always, you know, okay, you know, I've been law. You know, he went to prison, prisoner for felony. I was a small boy then. You see, when they were reading that judgment, you know, they were reading judgment. Some of us are speculating that maybe a tiger will emerge and threaten that judge so he can feel it. But the tiger did not emerge. I was, all, I was sent to prison. The same thing, you see our elections. Our Lord lost two elections. He went to court. You get me? And he lost. The last one that he lost, that was, okay, it was during military regime. There was a rumor that in order not to shake hands with the uh, with a, with a, what's his name, about Sojo, he, he put his hand, his hand in bandage. That way because, and even then, it's totally military. About Sojo said that the best man may not win. Get me? But you see, I keep on saying Nigeria is a presidential system of government. It checks and balances, legislative, uh, executive, and the judiciary. So they cannot, they have to interpret the law for us. That is their duty. No matter how incessant the litigation is. But you know, Nigerian politicians have a lot of money. And the, the, the litigation costs money. Mm -hmm. So they will always, always come. And what the CJ is saying is that the, the temptations are there. They are not incentives, they are temptations. But you value your honor and integrity and desist from it. You may be alone, but at the end of the day, your conscience will make you sleep well in your bed. Definitely. Yeah. Well, um, Mr. Shepard, we also know that Chief Justice Ariwala is also an advocate for um, digital transformation in the judicial system. That's I'm right. wondering how you think that might ease the burden that he's talking about in terms of, you know, the political cases. Do you think it would have any impact whatsoever if this no, is what hastened? He's saying, what he's saying is that uh, because of development in society, mm -hmm. uh, there are new cases coming on. And I understand what he's saying. Uh, development in the digital economy, on the internet, artificial intelligence, misinformation, and all that. And the way data is, is, is stored, monetized, and used in society. You get me? Some of these judges, maybe some of them don't even have a laptop. You get me? Or know how to. Yeah. But the, what they are doing, I've read instances, they send them on courses. You get me? On courses on specialized aspects of the law, new, new, new developments in the law, new developments in the law. So that when the cases come, at least they have a, a knowledge base, a database. So you don't think that if, if this digital aspect is, is implemented or hastened, you don't think it might ease the, the pressure ah. that they're feeling from all these cases? Ah, what do I, do I explain what Okay, you just said, digital. for instance, that they don't have, some, of them, some of them might not have laptops and whatnot, mm. and they might have all yeah. this, you know, analog files, you know, files to go through, which is also yes. making things more and difficult. They, they, so. they will have secretaries. Okay, they so you don't think that it will help no, in any way? Of course, it is. And they, they know it is an handicap which they are trying to rectify that you are going on courses. They go on courses on all these things before they do the judgment. About, let me give you an example. If you think it is that easy. In, the, <laughs> in, in South Africa, you know AI? AI can write cases and submit. But in this case, in the case in South Africa, artificial intelligence falsified cases. You get me? So, they took, the, the Ministry of Justice took that law firm to court. Mm -hmm. And they apologized. And the, the judge said that, look, forget that it is artificial intelligence, it is not perfect. That you have responsibility for what you present. So you have to read it all over. But if you have a lazy judge who does not <laughs> scrutinize, you know somebody would have been sent to jail because mm -hmm. you believe so much in artificial <laughs> and digital <laughs> equipment. So it's an evolving situation. It's an evolving, and you know the technology industry does not go to anybody. The rate of obsolescence of new products.
It's high. Before you know it, a year's time, what you think it's the fastest thing, another one has replaced it. But you see, you know, they are conservative people. They look, you know the law. That's why I didn't want to become a, The law is, I say it is backward looking. They thrive on antecedents. It takes a brave judge to break out of that uh, antecedent and say, okay, I create a new judgment. It was very, very beautiful. But the, the, to get to the court of appeal is no easy thing. And with me, as a student of literature and language, I enjoyed the judgment, the last judgment given, <laughs> because of the way they read it out. Okay, yes. uh, Mr. Shobowale, uh, I just want to quickly, you know, crave your indulgence a bit and go outside the scope of this, even though we're still uh, we're talking about this. Now, you know, he's talking about, he, he, uh, the CJN has mentioned, you know, being able to reduce the culture of litigation. But what I want to ask you is about this time frame, you know, when it comes to presidential tribunal, gubernatorial, as well as, you know, the, uh, uh, the local uh, government. We just saw what happened in Kano, for example, mm -hmm. where the governor who had served more than his 100 days had now been sacked. Do you think that maybe um, it should be looked into maybe making sure that the time frame in which a lot of these judgments or you know, tribunals are put together happen before the swearing in so that in that way there's less pressure you know on the judiciary and even on the on, on, on those that are involved in those particular cases i will still be pressure on the judiciary but that's the constitution you have to amend the constitution mm. you have to amend it but you see uh you see justice delayed is justice denied. denied you get now but you see even now even now as it is no, even the presidential something. If the Supreme Court uh, rules otherwise, mm -hmm. the you get now, um, the president will go. And if they give it to the other person, that is how it is. But that is the law. The law, the law, you see, is made like that. So that because of undue haste, you do not, you do not, you do not uh, tamper with justice. There was something I read somewhere that is better for one man to, you know, they, they, they have a way they call it now, that is, it's better for you to make sure nobody goes to prison unnecessarily, mm -hmm. you get me? Rather than that a wrong person should go to prison. All right, then. said the means of justice grind slowly, mm -hmm. they can grind exceedingly fine. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Yeah. Dyer. Of course, we always appreciate your time and analysis here on Newsday. <laughs>